I think it is time, and we've already been getting questions. Uh, Timberwolf wants to know your predictions for the Blue Jays already. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let's get into this. Let's talk a little bit about Marissa Roberto and where she's oh. at in her life right now. Like, where are you physically at right now? What is HUD? Um, uh, well, heads up, heads up daily is is HUD. This is this is the HUD. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's all, it, it derives from like our heads up display. Originally, it was going to be heads up display. Yeah. Um, but then you know, daily show. Yeah. So heads up daily. Um, so it's an hour TV show every single day, no commercials. So we have to make 50, 59 minutes of TV every day. Wow. Um, for Super About Channel Overwatch. and Thanks TV. A, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of. Uh, a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but it's great because all of our producers come from different backgrounds of esports. So it's an esports news talk show, essentially, um, encompassing everything to do with esports. And then with like, I like to say it's like an like an 80, 90 percent esports show with like 10 percent mainstream gaming. So um, like they let me have my little moments of like mainstream gaming. So I do like I do the drop. Like I still talk about new game releases and all that stuff. But uh, and then we'll have um, some people come on. Usually Wednesdays we talk about more mainstream gaming stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm learning a lot more about League of Legends and Dota than I ever thought I would. Um, <laughs> I just like I didn't I didn't live these MOBA lives at all. Like it, yes. it was just a whole different scene. And trying to watch them play when you don't play is very challenging. Are you starting um, to play? Uh, yeah. So one of our producers, Lisa League, was trying to teach me once, and she's like, "Okay, I don't I don't know if you can do this. Like, yeah, I, just, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can either." So it's more just like me watching, getting to know the players because there are so many of them that have, that have been doing this for a very long time, yep. and it's crazy how like. We we in the mainstream gaming have such a disconnect from esports um, because I always thought that they were interconnected. Like I always thought that because we're all gamers, we all understand each other, we all know what's going on. That's not no. the case at all. This no. is a completely different world. Uh, lives under a totally different umbrella, and each of the games have their own unique communities. So um, like people in the CS:GO community don't know anything about League. They don't watch League. They have no idea what's going on. Like right. it's a it's a different game altogether, right? Yes. So yeah. um, you see a little bit of of dipping back and forth with like CS:GO players playing PUBG or um, Fortnite, that kind of stuff, like things that kind of make sense for them, um, or like League playing Dota. But for the most part, it's like everybody sticks to their genre, yeah. and they become famous in their genre. So we get to know them. Um, we have like we have players Skype in all the time. We have analysts Skype in. Um, a lot of people at the desk too coming to visit and chat. Um, so yeah, I'm learning a lot. My co-host is really great too. Um, he comes from Rocket League, and that's where we met. Actually, I was hosting a Rocket League tournament where he was casting and. Uh, uh, yeah, just like really great. He reminds me of my brother a lot, like this really like high energy. Um, so we were already fighting like brother and sister, which works for me, of course. <laughs> and um, like I need that. I'm like, like when we were looking for a co-host, it's like we auditioned a lot of people, and uh, we like we want to like I wanted Brody because, well, he he put me in my place, and you know how much I love that. Like I love when people call me out on my BS, yeah. and uh, he he did that. I'm like I need. Like, like I, like I just, I need somebody to make fun of me, and he was, uh, he was the one guy that was like able to do that, no problem. So, uh, yeah, Brody and I have have had a lot of fun together for sure. So, I, I've looked for clips to be able to watch the oh. show, but it's really hard to find the material because it's a TV show on Super Channel. Yeah, is that it's the only way that you can watch it right now? Yeah, I guess they so. want it to be that way. They want people to subscribe yeah. to Super Channel, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the whole idea is that exactly. Um, but we do have um, little clips. We have clips now that we're putting on YouTube just so people can get to know who we are and what we're about because a lot of people don't have cable. Yeah. So yeah. Um, just for a good, if you want a little taste of what we're doing, like we have really, really fun segments that when we have guests in, like we do rage quits. So they just stand in front of the blue screen and something that really upset them in whatever game they were playing okay, or cool. anybody in the community that's really upset them. And we put like flames and fire behind them. Like <laughs> we have heavily produced segments like that. I have my lady love segments with, which I love doing. It's my favorite I've seen thing. Those those are fantastic. Yeah. And I, 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 like I'm, I just... I'm disappointed. We didn't do those on EP that that's a great segment. That's all you too, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, uh, I, yeah. So this week I wrote something special for, um, actually, well, okay. It's for Jennifer Hale. 
But uh, I'm like, wait, do I spoil it? It's fine. It's for Jennifer Hale. It's going to be uh, in the next episode. Because I also want to, you know, pay homage to all the women that have lent, lent their voices to these amazing for games, sure. these characters. Because, like, like, do you, I don't know if you remember that fan expo. We sat beside her, and they had the lineup of girls just wanting to meet only Jennifer. They are there just for Jennifer. And yeah. they were there for, like, all their garb, their cosplay with um, Femme Shep. And, um, like, I'll never forget those moments, right? Those are, those are a big part of, like you know, the reason why I love this industry so much. So, um, and I don't, I didn't, I feel like we have never really given enough love to women and women that really dedicate their lives to this. And um, I'm not saying that men don't because they totally do. Yeah. It's just, you know, it was a, a harder climate for women to get recognition for so long. And I think that this... You don't have to explain this segment. I think it's just a yeah. fantastic segment that makes <laughs> tremendous sense. And I think it's so classy and cool that you're taking the time to produce material to, to give people shout outs, whoever they are. You know, this is, yeah. uh, I mean, you and I have talked about this, but one thing I've observed is as we've gone to this games as service model and, and esports mm -hmm. and games that mm -hmm. are running forever, like outlasting the careers of people that build them or create them, you know, games will just keep mm -hmm. going. We're starting yeah. to lose touch with some of the people behind the scenes and stuff like what you're producing is incredibly important. So yes, I think I... it's, I think I applaud that. Yeah, but quietly because Blake doesn't. Want, I don't want Blake. But, oh, sorry, that. sorry, Blake. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we're like, we'll do. We're doing, you know, other things too when we can. Just like, just so people are reminded of where they came from and why they love this stuff so much. Um, like I have this awesome producer, Nick. Who, like we just put together this the history of Metroidvania. So, um, you know, we're gonna he like it's these really nicely produced segments that can live forever, but also like to have in between. Cause again, we don't have commercials. Yeah. So we, so we like, we cover, cover a lot of use for it. So like, okay, more gaming stuff. And so we'll put that in there too, just to keep people that are, cause we don't know, like if you're tuning in, you might only like Hearthstone. Yeah. So when we talk about other games, like you might just click off. So it's just nice to have the little breaks in between where we talk about gaming, gaming, and then uh, people can maybe jump back in. How is it too soon to ask about how the show is doing? Like, are you hearing from viewers? Is the network happy? What's happening? Yes. Uh, I mean, I don't know numbers. And, and but by I the way, Marissa is not just the host. She's a uh, producer on the show, and she's helping to originate a whole bunch of real content here. So hats off, lady. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's not just me. No. Um, I, there's, there's a whole team of people here and, uh, um, you know, just working their butts off. It's a very small team doing a lot of things. Sounds like Canada. Um, yes, <laughs> sounds like Canada for sure. Um, so, yeah, no, there's just, uh, I, I'm very, like, I'm very proud of how quickly it all came together because, honestly, I just heard about this. December. We talked that they about this in December, and then it's like, yeah. and you yeah, launched right. the same day that we launched EP Live, and I saw our tweets oh, going see. back and forth about that. It was like, wow, I guess <laughs> we're in competition for time, it, I guess, right now, you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess so, but maybe, I don't know. I don't know what time, but you do this at this time every day. Well, we, when? and it's the internet. You live forever. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You live forever on the internet. Yes, yes, it's, it's the internet, and we're not in mm. competition. I want you to I succeed. Know. And, I know uh, we're only on that. So yeah, we're on uh, Super Channel One and Jinx TV Canada. So Jinx TV Canada airs us three times a, a three times looping um, the following day. Okay. And then and then Super Channel is at uh, seven p.m. every night. Okay. And then um, so yeah, I mean do you I know can show you how my... many viewers you're getting or I do. We don't know numbers. I don't know. I I've been asking. I don't know yet. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. We get tweets from people, which is really nice. That's awesome. Um, and then, but it's again, it's a new a, a new thing. And it's the first of its kind, really, because there there is no dedicated news show to esports right. on TV. On TV, so well, uh, not dedicated. You're right. People keep trying dedicated. it, and they keep popping in, and it's a. It, it, and that was my question about this: is the you know, are you guys pulling producers that are specific to each of these communities, and are you mm -hmm. trying to kind of? Uh, cover all bases and I mean because yeah. this is you're, you're right this is a massive task you've got a whole bunch of yeah. audiences that you're trying to connect with here aren't, aren't you yeah n no completely so like the whole idea of it was okay so um you know we tune into sports shows all the time mm -hmm. uh, like I do just to get my sports news obviously and so like there are sports in there that you don't tend to gravitate toward like a lot of people don't like the CFL but it's still a part of the show when you just kind of sit through it if you want to. If not, you want to get a snack and then come back to it when they're talking about baseball. You can do that, too. So um, there is that in the show. So every day is something different. We have different guests guests every single day talking about different 
uh, genres of games, different games. We have different e-athletes coming in as well. We have uh, versus. We have debates over. Um, like Brody and I had a had a head to head about why esports should be called esports, and he believes that esports shouldn't be called esports, and we shouldn't associate esports with sports. I'm like, yeah, okay, but sports is in the name, so why don't you just relax? Like yeah. we have a little. We do like a little back and forth fighting sesh. Um, we have like we get our last guest that came in to fight it out. We we're fighting over like the casual game, like casual gamer label. Like w- nobody wants. We hate casuals. We hate filthy casuals because they're ruining the whole scene, the whole gaming scene. Oh, like no, that's not like no. that's that was one point of view, and yeah. another point of view is like no, we we all started out as casuals. We all started that way. Like if you started playing your game on your phone, who cares? Does that like are you offended? Did you start playing? Bejew- or whatever it was like no we all started with something yeah that brought us to this point where we love and appreciate games for whatever the reason may be so we want to make it an all-inclusive show about yes a lot of esports and even if you don't like esports i feel like there is something you can hold on to with the show or maybe you want to get into it a little bit because it's it is out there and it is happening well i just think it's great that uh ginks and uh super channel and the you know the executives are spending money in this direction because the truth Mm -hmm. is you know with ep on television and x play and g4 all the stuff that's happened around broadcast game trailers it only serves to, you know, stretch the conversation, and it needs yeah. to, it, you know, in spite mm-hmm. of the apathy that the games industry will sometimes present and project out there, um, mm-hmm. it will only lead to better games if more people are yeah. talking about it and more people are aware of it. And television right. is, uh, it, as you and I have talked about many times, is an incredible mm-hmm. shotgun blast out to, you don't know who's watching, right? Yeah, you and don't. it's not targeted to any specific i mean you have your demo sort of target but there's lots of people that filter in and find and will sit back and and be educated and may not play may not buy but may buy for Mm -hmm. someone else or may be interested in uh having a conversation with a younger person in their life or whatever so i i I think it's fantastic i think it's great no it's true Yeah. yeah i mean we had that with reviews in the run and like how many people would just message me or like come up to me saying you know what like I don't even like video games but I watch because I wanted to know what mobile game to get like thank you for doing that you know what I mean yep. it wasn't it's, it's just like it's the biggest they... compliment isn't it it's like yeah. I, I am not a hardcore I don't you're you, yeah. the audience do, or the uh, industry doesn't already have me as a customer and I'm not yeah. already bought in but I watch your material mm-hmm. because it entertains me and I want to know more about this world that I don't know much about and that's right. why you make television. That's why you yeah. work to build all that. I mean, it's great to have the fans, and I love you guys. I love that you're watching, yeah, and yeah. And, uh, and I know Marissa loves all the support that she gets for that, that you know from people that know us. But of course, the the reason why we've endeavored to build television and endeavored to have conversations that sort of stretch outside of uh, the, you know the, the the sort of already converted is to bring more people mm-hmm. into this medium and bring more people yeah. into this discussion. I, do you believe that esports has that propensity? Do you believe that it, it, it's a uh, um, uh, like? Is it working? Is it growing? Is it bringing more people in? I know yeah. it's big. I know it's big money, but it it's, all feels like yeah. it's a lot of a lot yeah. of risk and a lot of people trying a bunch of different things. Yeah. I know. I messaged uh, Nick Chester because Nick Chester works for Epic Games and, and they're, of course, behind Fortnite. Love Nick. And he does PR for them, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so do you even work, Nick? Like, yeah. do you even have to do any work? Because your game is doing its own PR. <laughs> like, just every com- like every kind of news outlet covers it. Any Like, any GIF that comes out or meme is all Fortnite. He's like, honestly, I... Yeah, I mean, I I technically don't have to because it's doing it all for me. But he cannot believe how how fast this has gone, how far it's gone. Yeah. Um, because it's free to play model they have. But also, like when I I message him at first, being like, "Are you excited about esports?" He sends me a gift back. I don't know if you know the Seinfeld episode where um, Kramer has that board, the the risk board that he's gonna play and is play at Jerry's house, and he needs to clear room on the table. So like esports <laughs> esports is Kramer. <laughs> Kicking with kicking all the sh- garbage off of Jerry's table and like slamming his game down on top of it because that's the whole idea behind it. That's what people from the outside looking in see because it just seems like oh, okay, 
you hear the word esports and you like you're percolating if you have money because oh you want to invest because you hear that this is the next big thing it's like you have to be careful yeah. about what you invest in because these things won't live forever they'll only live with dedicated communities who care enough right. to put their time and energy into it you need to have influencers you need to have gamers that have a following online as well that's why you see um big orgs like phase so phase clan has a huge following and it's because they pick up people with huge followings and then give them even more of a boost so they have so many people just buying their merch for that reason so there's a lot of money in these orgs with these gamers but you're also seeing like huge companies like mlse investing in esports like the, like actual sports sports esports so you have like the nba now kicking off with 2k i'm yeah. um, trying to build something there i'm sure we're going to see something nhl um maybe it'll be threes i don't know but you have these communities that are already online already living and they have another boost now with esports which is exciting but i don't know how long those in particular will last if they don't have influencers, if they don't have the right people in place to make it so. Because yeah. our our interests will, will vary. Like we'll go from one thing to another. So how do you keep this one community locked in forever? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the big question for everybody and, and, and you yeah. can't really predict it, right? Like the game has mm -hmm. to kind of sort of furnish that sort of inertia or that that uh, mm -hmm. that that push mm -hmm. forward into uh Actually. into being an esports and it has to feel organic and it has to work yeah. i mean this is this is me uh, as mm -hmm. someone that doesn't really have the time because I, mean, yeah. I have i've covered all of this stuff from a vantage point of i'm i watch this for a bit i play this for a bit and then i move on mm -hmm. and so esports yeah. to me feels like, I, like well you gotta live you gotta live there forever yeah like you're watching this for all you know, like whole seasons, and you're getting. I I just don't have the time. That's I know. That, Can you imagine playing Call of Duty yeah. as your life? Like that is your life. Only playing Call of Duty forever, competing in Call of Duty. Like that's yeah. what they do. This is where they live their lives. Right. So, um, so how does that I'm, become? I guess it will get bigger, but will it be it, as big as NBA, or will it be as? Because everybody says it will be, but will it be? you know, the NFL of the future or NASCAR of the future, like. Sure, and we'll all be living in our VR goggles and just like <laughs> sitting in the stadiums, just taking it all in. I mean, I mean, maybe, because these, um, the reason why, and the reason why this got so much attention with these, with these sports companies is because they went to, like League of Legends came to Toronto, for example. They sold out their Canada Center in 10 minutes right. for League of Legends, that big stadium they sold out. So, that was a huge eye opener for them. Like, oh my gosh, this is incredible! Huge money train. Yeah. Um, let's you know, let's jump in. And so, um, but they have to be careful with the way they jump in. They can't just be like money, money, money. They have to actually, you know, have guidelines. They have to um, make sure that they're giving the fans what exactly they need. And it's hard to gauge when you don't have technical fans for something yet. But they already have the money because the second they announced that they were going to do this, big companies that have already invested with these sports companies are going to invest with them because they know that they have a proven record of, right. of obviously getting views, getting eyes out there and filling seats. So why not invest with them? Because they already know that it's kind of like a safe bet. They've already had partnerships with these people before versus like a video game that has violence. Well, maybe they don't want to put their brand associated with that. So right. um, they, I, the, the money is there. We just have to wait now to see if um, the fans will still lock in. What would make it better? What would make this make what would make your job better and make like because your job is is not just to see these companies be successful but your job yeah. is to make good television around this stuff and to i know reach i more thought people. That, yeah i mean my job would be made a little better when i'm covering when i'm actually at live events when i host them um if the players have had media training the way that sports uh, athletes have media training right. uh because i you know i've had situations where like i was hosting this rocket league tournament and this guy fell off his chair it was this hilarious moment and i brought, I brought him to talk to me and i'm like oh like what what happened everybody can you explain what went down uh yeah like okay um, so any like I just had to okay there's no back and forth here I'm like so like I'll ask him about like the last play they did or whatever uh huh yep <laughs> I, I just was at a uh, Call of Duty event in um, in January and and those yeah. folks and I don't know if it's Activision working with those gamers or they've been yeah. doing the tour enough but they were fantastic I was very impressed. The one thing I, yeah, I like from my vantage point, it's like I don't know their names at all. 
I, yeah. I get their their tags, and mm-hmm. then I'm instantly like I pff, I forgot their tags right yeah. away. But I feel like the the lack of identity and the lack of ownership in that identity is mm-hmm. um, something that's holding the the concept of competitive gaming back from people yeah. that don't have the time to devote to just being all consuming with this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's true, for sure. The people that live in those communities know these players inside and out. They know when they eat breakfast. They know, like, they follow every single tweet they they put out in the day. Yeah. Um, they're just. But the thing is that, like, with the Call of Duty community, they have those personalities. They're out there, and they're all about triggering their fan base because that's how they get likes on things. That's how they sure. get views. That's how they get sponsorship dollars because their our fans are highly engaged. So when you're highly engaged, sometimes you need to be triggered, unfortunately, so that fuels a lot of trolling. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've had I've had moments that haven't been that positive but with the Call of Duty community, but I mean, that's the only, I heard that Gears is actually maybe a little worse, but I haven't actually, uh, wow. it's just like, just like a community that it just like breeds kind of trolling and hate and, and well, it's, uh, it's, insulting stuff. I don't know how, I mean, that's uber competitive, right? Like we're talking yeah. about, it's virtual killing, but you're killing yeah. your characters, like in some pretty, uh, you know, visceral ways in games mm-hmm. like that. So I can't imagine mm-hmm. you play those things without getting riled up and getting in, like that's just gonna, it engenders yeah. that kind of, uh, that For kind sure. of energy, and I, I think would imagine. People that, people that follow you, are, will share the same kind of mentality as you, right? Yeah. So, um, like, you see a player like XQC in Overwatch League who is a huge troll, and he's been he's been fined several times for saying really awful things. But if you go into his chat, if you watch him on Twitch, that's all his chat is, too. Like, they're just nothing but trolls, of, like, just loving to make fun of each other, and they say it's all in love. But people jumping in for the first time don't, like, you, you're not going to know that. You see, you see guys like Dr. Disrespect... Who, who is like the ultimate troll out there, yeah. but he does it in a very comedic way, which brings people in and they want to see more. So um, like there's this fine line that you have to dance uh, to make your sponsors happy, but also like, you know, engage your viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody asked, I think it was, uh, hold on. Uh, I, for, I, I think I lost it right there. I'm sorry. Oh, oh uh, D- Danny Sullivan asked, what's on Vic's arm? This is a tattoo my daughter put on my arm here. I don't know. If oh, anybody, that's a, nice. It's a little teddy bear. And I've been trying to wash it off. It, it will not wash <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Uh, t- show us the set. Show us this oh, set, sure. okay? Because yeah. we're, we're okay. getting like we're diving right in, and I feel like we we need to do this more like once a month or something, so you can educate yeah, no me kidding. on uh, on okay. on esports. Okay, so let me see this on beautiful e-sports. set. Yeah, no kidding. We'll do uh, yeah esports with Marissa yeah. every whatever day. <laughs> um, okay, so this is my this is the de- I'll just actually I don't need to be in the shot. Um, so this is the desk where we start in the morning. Cool. Um, just get the little view there. So a little desk there. Yep. That's where we start with the news. And then uh, then we come over to the lounge area, which is just right here. Um, Donnie uh, uh, Swangor, Donnie Esk, was saying, um, is this the same set or the same studio that they filmed the Daily Planet show in? No, this is a brand new studio okay. that they built just for us. Cool. Um, this is this is my favorite part. I love this door, this like very industrial door. That's great. With this lighting. Yeah. It, it does, it's not a real door. Yeah. It's not real. It's TV. It's just pretend. It's TV. No. We get it. When, now I'm going up to the when, mezzanine When do here. the drinks come out? It's a, the drinks? It's an amazing bar. Oh, no. no. It is an amazing bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is where we shoot. So this is the mezzanine. So this is where we do, like, I do my tiers up here. I'll do, like, top fives or, like, we have a segment called Shit Pro Say. Oh, sorry. We probably can't swear. Oh, we do a segment can, called. You can swear. It's the internet. Oh. Okay, great. So we do a segment called Ship Pro Se, which is why I also think it's great that they don't have media training, these guys, because they will tweet whatever they're thinking. Right. So um, with like no filters. Don't, please so don't fall down the that. stairs. That would be amazing video. <laughs> but it, I don't really, want you to get hurt. <laughs> it really would be. Uh, so yeah, this, this studio is freaking huge. Uh, it's so nice. And then there's um, over here, it's kind of dark, but this is where they shoot the, um, the huddle. This is where we do like a little podcast. Cool. Here. And then we also have like a blue screen and uh, all that stuff. Our little game shelf here. I'm sure it needs a Victor Lucas touch. Victor Lucas, it's been requested several times that you join us on the show at some point. So I would love it. I, I, yeah, we really want you here. That would be amazing. Um, I have, we actually have a little, <laughs> this is, if you want to see my office <laughs> that I never use. 
I'll just uh, I'll show you through here. So this is behind the desk. There's like a little um, <laughs> there's a little area in here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I never. Uh, it, that, so, that looks like a place where you take people to torture them, and that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's your. That, we that's just, your we decided that's Brody's um that's Brody's farting corner. He can go there and fart if he needs oh, he, to. Okay, you guys have de yeah. designated farting areas. Okay, I don't see anybody <laughs> asking about this, but um, what's happened with Xbox now? You've been the Xbox uh, yeah. uh, person for yeah. Canada for uh, a long time now, like almost two years. Is that uh, able to oh continue God, while you do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still saying, uh, well, the thing is, like, it's a community show and it lives online, so it's not, doesn't really compete with the show in any way. Right. And um, I am i don't actually have to, I, I just am the glue, basically, for the show, right? Yeah. So I introduce it, I say what's happening. Sometimes we do, like, really fun segments, but for the most part, it's the community that, that, that provides content for the show, and I'm just basically, like, the, the voice of it or the face of it. Yeah. And then, um, so really, like, I, I do, it, it is, I love them so much. It is the sweetest gig. Like, I'll just go in there. I quickly do, like, we have, like, an evening because they, they work with the schedule now. So I'll go in there in the evening, shoot whatever we need to do, and then uh, I'm just, they send me on my way. So, um, yeah, like, really easy, really sweet people to work with. And um, I just, honestly, I, I, I love them. I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to give it up, that, you know? That's amazing. And, and nor just should gonna, you have to. That's yeah. fantastic. So awesome. what happens now, you've got two gigs in gaming, and you're also working yeah. for North Northern Arena as well, which is one of the big esports uh, uh, yeah. pr proprietors, pr presenters, yeah, promoters so in a, Canada. Yeah, so it's an esports organizer. Okay. So um, we provide um, basically the best kind of, of way to facilitate gamers, like pro gamers, to come and compete with one another because we actually work with uh, pro circuits as well. So um, we're going to be announcing some really cool stuff, which I'm really excited about. But yes, it's a lot, it's a lot to juggle because um, I do like I do all the socials. Like I, I we, it's fine. We have a small team, so it's like I'm I'm trying to manage my social with like heads of daily social with like Northern Arena social. Yep. But uh, yeah, so I'm doing that too, and then I'll host their live events as well, which is always a lot of fun because I actually get to interact with the professional gamers and and get to know them a little bit more. Because it's always nice, like you can you can interact with them on Twitter all you want, but it's always nice like meeting and chatting and face to face with somebody. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited because we're gonna have some. We just had a Rainbow Six tournament um, in Montreal at the same time as the Invitational, so kind of uh, fed into that. So we worked with Ubisoft for that. We'll be working with Sionix and um, uh, soon for Rocket League. And I'm really excited. I don't want to give anything away, but. That's awesome. Some so you, what happens with HUD then when you travel? Are you guys all set up to be able to shoot remotely and, and put you into the um, show or do you guys? Yeah, so we have uh, amazing producers. One of our producers, uh, her name is Lisa, yeah. and she does the new. She does the download for us, like the news, and then we also do um, lounge segments with her too. Yep. She's great, actually. I I had a terrible like medical situation earlier in J uh, January when we first launched. I completely went blind in my uh, right eye. What? So I could, yeah yeah. Holy so shit! I was, Nobody told me that. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Is everything okay? Yeah. It was really bad. I was like, I could what? not. And I, how did I was that thinking, happen? Well, they said it well, after I several like appointments mom, later. But how did that? How did that happen? Yeah, several appointments later, the ophthalmologist is like, "Well, you know, it's just one of those things." Like, what? What kind of explanation is that? What? But the, uh, that's initially, unbelievable. They me, initially, they told me it was a, uh, an infected corneal abrasion. But I've had I've had a scratched cornea before, and I've still been able to live my life. So I couldn't even open I couldn't even open my left eye because it hurt, it still made my right eye strain. So I couldn't, I was completely blind. Oh my blind. God, as you're launching the show. Yes. This all, oh. Yes. We, so we were, we were a week, a week in, I think, like maybe two weeks in. I had, everybody here was sick too. We were plagued with like this horrible flu. Wow. And then, uh, then that, like it was just kind of one thing after another. And then like, Le like thank God for Lisa. She was able to like jump in and, and host with Brody. And uh, it's just, it, I was just so grateful. <laughs> it sounds like when, when I was away and Scott got sick and you had to host yeah. both shows. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Oh my God. Yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely something. Oh my God. So, um, Are you okay yeah, then? Or can you see okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, being very cognizant of uh, how, how long I've worn my contacts for and like that I have to change them exactly on the day. Did you um, did you do that because you kept your contacts in for so long? Did you? Do I don't know. They won't tell me what it was because my contacts were clean. They were fine. Yeah. 
but they still haven't given me a reason why. I'm thinking it's because um, once you scratch your cornea, you can scratch it again easily. Okay. So because I was coughing so horrendously from the flu and the cold that was going around, yes. maybe I had reactivated it or re re reinfected. I have no idea what happened. They still haven't given me a legit answer, but I couldn't. I was so sensitive to light. Um, Sammy, and, yeah. Sammy in 111 says you should adopt an eye patch look like Nick Fury. I know. It actually was the same timing when like Sea of Thieves beta was coming out and I thought maybe I could make it work, but uh, did not have an eye patch, unfortunately. So. <laughs> that's that's crazy. Well, my, I'm, glad, my, I'm glad your my, eyes are okay. Me too. You should have seen me like I, poor Francisco. Like, so my fiance, I made him, he had to take off work so he could guide me to the hospital. Yes. <laughs> and like, oh, wow. I like sit down and, I, and the doctor was trying to talk to me and I like, I wasn't really aware of anything. And so it seemed like I also couldn't hear. He's like, Marissa, you're not, you're not also deaf. Like, can you please? <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're just so disoriented because you've lost a whole, like you've lost your vision. I so the blind are courageous, obviously. Yes. Um, I'm that new perspective, of course. Oh. It was awful. Well, it I, was awful. I'm, so, I, I'm sorry you had to go through there, but uh, Work Oasis it's Canadian great. Healthcare for you. It's one of those things, right? So yes. It's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I got I, Kyle Shenard asks, is uh, Marissa still doing Xbox All for One? Yes, she is. Yeah. Uh, Mario All Stars is on your one of your shelves there. Blade Blur noticed. Oh, you noticed it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, man. Noticing the ta oh, somebody's talking about the tattoo s some more. Oh, uh, your your tattoo. Uh, yeah. People are uh, still talking about X Play, raving about X Play. Oh, Just oh keep yeah. It up. The You're watching EP and HUD now. You want to rave about X Play? Yes. Go right ahead. That's all good, chat. You do it. Uh, but, yeah. Well. You know, they were back in the day, the G4 days, you know. The G4 days, yes. Um, we got a question from Blade Blur as a huge Pokemon fan. How, uh, what, do you, what do you think of Pokemon Sun and Moon alongside the Ultra versions? Did you play the Ultra? Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the Pikachu detective no, situation. No, that comes out this <laughs> month, though. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, I have no, you know what? I have not played, played Pokemon in forever. I feel like I have not. I've been addicted to Stardew Valley. Did you know that? Oh, it's an amazing game. Did you know? Yeah. That I have not stopped playing Stardew Valley. It's an. I mean, it's I've lost my life. To it. Yeah, no. It is. Every because game you're not is out really, to kill like, you now. It feels like it's like yeah. We'll, we'll keep you in here, my precious. You won't be <laughs> able to look at any other games. <laughs> there is no ending to our game anymore. It's crazy. I know. Right? But it. But and then I feel really bad too because it's a Harvest Moon ripoff, like 100% yeah. Harvest Moon ripoff. Yeah. And uh, smarter though. But I'm just living in it because of all the amazing stories that you kind of uncover. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, I can make anybody in the town date me? Well, that's kind of exciting. Yes. Like you just <laughs> start giving flowers to everybody. Um, no, it's a yeah, it's a problem. Like where you know the next morning it's like 6 a.m. Like okay, what did I accomplish today? Mm, Nothing. Yeah. Actually, nothing in my real life. <laughs> it's just in the video game. So I'm trying to stay away from that. Like the switch I makes really, it I, dangerous too, right? Because it's always with you. And I actually only played it on Xbox. I've only been oh, playing yeah. on my Xbox. Okay. Yeah. But the switch, uh, the switch right now, I still have to finish Zelda. I finally went back because I, um, I had gotten stuck in a Divine Beast, and I'm like, okay, you know what? F this. I'm done. Yeah. Like I just quit it because I like I can't take it anymore. Um, and then I finally went back to it. Uh, and it felt really good to like get past the part I was stuck. Ugh, felt amazing. Yep. And then uh, I still have to finish Mario Odyssey. Like, there's so many games to play yep. that it's frustrating. And then I'm seeing, uh, like, even the fact that Red Dead. Like, I have anxiety over the fact that Red Dead is coming out, and it's not even coming out till November. Yep. I have anxiety knowing that, like, I have to finish whatever game I really want to play because November's gonna come and it's gonna be all Red Dead. It's it's nuts. What's blowing my mind about the Switch is. Even though it's only a year old, you turn it on and there's like a million games in the store. There's a lot of indie games and a lot of ports and stuff, yeah. but it's like there's a lot of stuff I haven't played too. And it's but it's like holy crap, they've got a lot of choice already on on just that machine. And let alone the PlayStation Store, the Xbox Store, and Steam. Yeah. We have choices. I know. I know, but I I mean Switch. Like I have to say, that's got to be the best. That's got to be the best system Nintendo's ever 
release yep. ever. Think- like it is just, I mean, anytime I see a trailer that just has that click, like snap, um, your little uh, switch noise that happens, it, it excites me. Like I get very like, oh, what's what's it going to be? Yeah. What's going to go? Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's, um, it's got that excitement behind it, which is so great. Like even people that haven't played games in a long time can pick up a switch and be like, oh, yeah, this is what it's like. It's a gateway drug. Right. And yeah. uh, what I've been saying, too, is that it's like a commercial every time you take it out the door and you play it anywhere. It's like, what is that thing? You know, like people I know. have envy right away. They want one of those things. It's so true, especially when you have like the colorful controllers, like those new Splatoon, uh, the the Splatoon colors we have. Yeah. I, we, I mean, we just got them. Francisco actually doesn't like when I take them because he says I have greasy fingers and I just ruin every controller ever, which is true. You, you so like I've been demoted back to. The, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am. So, um, yeah, so I have to be, I've been demoted back to the gray controller. <laughs> the gray because oh, I, I got put on them or something. He's like, yeah, he, he's very precious with the controls. So. Uh, Blair Farrell says, did you read Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, Marissa? There's a very, uh, there's a great piece about the creation of Stardew Valley. I know you didn't read yeah. that because you're playing Stardew Valley. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And then honestly, when I'm not doing that, like I'm streaming different game competitions happening on Twitch constantly. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's been less game playing, more game watching, essentially. Yes. We've been watching Francisco play um, Horizon Zero Dawn because I haven't played it yet, but I really want to get to know Aloy. Yeah. So I'm just like watching him um, have this amazing campaign with her. It's just a Wonderful fantastic game. game. Wonderful game. Yeah. And we do have lots of uh, incredible things to uh, to catch up on uh, and to talk about for the future. Do you want to just give me, uh, do you know what Microsoft has got in the works? Have you heard any rumblings or anything you want to tell I can tell you that. No, honestly, they keep me completely in the dark. Like, I don't know anything until I get to set and we're shooting it. I'm like, oh, this is happening? That's exciting. Oh. So, so Xbox uh, Switch confirmed. Thank you, oh, yeah. Marissa. You right, can, should right we here. quote that? Marissa Roberto confirms portable Xbox at E3. Amazing having <laughs> you on. It's you're the fountain of information. I love these exclusives. We can. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not true. Don't but, write that anywhere, please. No, okay. Not at all. All right. Um, I will be. At, I will be at E3 though, so hopefully we we'll, we can catch up there too. But um, before that, pl- if you're coming to Toronto, please, like we, I want you here. I would love to be you. out there. Absolutely, I can't wait to uh, to uh, see you in person and to see yeah. some of the team. And uh, yeah. I've been thinking a lot about you and Steve and Raju and Sean and Scott's out there now too. It's I miss yeah. all of you people and. Uh, Nick, you gotta come out. I know, I know, I know. Tomorrow, let's go. Uh, can, can you t- crank up the heat just just a little? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad right now. It's getting better. It's not no, too bad. it's not the heat. It's uh, it uh, it's all dependent on work and and travel right. and all that stuff. But yeah, I'll be out in Toronto before you know it. I'll be out there and then. For, are there no tournaments in Vancouver that you can come and cover for HUD? Like. Um, possibly we're talking about maybe one happening okay. this in the next season that we're launching here so um yes possibly i will let you know for sure but before that you will be here okay that sounds great so you'll be here on this day i, I love <laughs> the sound of that that sounds amazing yeah. and uh i would love to kind of make this a regular thing if that's cool with you can we yeah. can we uh the Skype sure. works. We officially oh, yeah. I mean, tested it again, and it works want, fine. If you want a crash course in esports every whatever, yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in as much as I can on, on what I've learned that week. <laughs> Marissa, everybody here on this chat, everybody watching the archive of this, everybody in the studio, which is Blake and me, uh, we, all, we all love you, and we're very happy for you, and, and uh, you just keep rocking and kicking butt, okay? Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, of course. I mean, none of this would be real without you, so... Uh, I have so much love for you and EP. Uh, you're, you're the best. Well, we'll see you soon, okay? Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> yeah.